Hi everybody, Richard Tromans here again at Artificial Lawyer TV. Today we're doing another product walkthrough. This time it's Evisort, the CLM platform. Uh, we're going to look at uh, dashboards in particular, which is uh, one of the key parts of the platform. Uh, to tell us more about it is Riley. Hey Riley. Hey Richard. Uh, great to be great to be here. Um, super excited about this. Um, yeah, I'll introduce myself to the audience here, but I'm the senior director of product at Evisort. I'm a lawyer by background. Uh, actually, a founding member. Of Evisort. We started Evisort uh, out of the Harvard Innovation Labs back in 2016, and we've been on a mission uh, to change the way that folks manage their contracts with AI. Fantastic. Sounds interesting. And I'm sure some of the readers will already be familiar with the name, but they may not have seen Evisort actually working. So this is going to be very interesting. Um, if you could just share your screen and, and uh, let's move on to the, uh, the walkthrough and I will disappear and I'll come back at the end to ask some questions. Sounds great. I think we start here, um, which I think is a great place to start when talking about Evisort, because one of the things that we pride ourselves on, in addition to a lot of, you know, CLM type capabilities that folks may be familiar with, is uh, that we turn contracts into data. Um, so we can take legacy documents, scan PDF documents, documents that have been through the Xerox machine a couple too many times, uh, bring those into our platform. Uh, and then we use a combination of OCR uh, and machine learning, artificial intelligence to turn contracts into actionable data. Uh, and so I like to start here because this is a visual representation of that data. This is a feature that we call our intelligent dashboards, uh, which tells our clients things like uh, what types of contracts uh, are they entering into? Uh, if there was a change to regulatory law in California, what would be the contracts that would be impacted? Uh, by that. I recently helped a client with uh, an acquisition, uh, and some of that pre-acquisition due diligence meant bringing those contracts into Evisort and immediately seeing things like how many of those contracts, customer contracts, have termination for convenience language uh, in them. Uh, and then things like, you know, a lot of folks are trying to keep up with an ever-evolving regulatory framework. So what do our contracts say about data privacy and how we're supposed to keep up with those obligations, a 72 hour breach notice obligation may not be compliant with the most recent GDPR regulations. But do you know that uh, if you haven't turned your contracts uh, into data and increasingly we're working with folks in finance and vendor management looking at things like, hey, what are our standard payment terms? Maybe the standard is net 30, but if we could identify vendor contracts that are on net 45, then we could pay our vendors later and we could create more working capital as a business. So there are so many different applications once you do turn those contracts into data, but historically contracts, because they're typically scanned PDF documents have been what we would call a, a data black hole. And I'll give one other example of just how this information can turn actionable immediately for our clients. We have a lot of folks I was talking to a large uh, insurance company uh, recently and their head of procurement came to us and said, hey, we need to take a million and a half out of our supply chain in the next year. Uh, and I was there with our CEO and we said, hey, we think we can do that with just a couple of data points. And one in particular, uh, we've seen clients save tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, even more um, by looking at contracts that are coming up for renewal in the next 30 to 60 days. Uh, without that visibility, contracts auto renew uh, out from under you. You have no idea you end up paying for services you don't need. I think Personally, we've all experienced that. We sign up for some sort of streaming service uh, on a free trial, and we check our credit card statement a couple of weeks later, and we find out we've been paying for something because the subscription automatically renewed. And obviously, that same problem happens to our large clients uh, at a much uh, more uh, large scale. Uh, and so if we can catch some of those things ahead of time, hey, look, I've got four contracts. If I don't do something in the next 30 days, those are going to automatically renew and we're going to end up paying for service we, we don't need. When we turn contracts into data, that's things we can know and then take action on. Um, so I want to show how we do that uh, because you may have seen dashboards before. A dashboard in and of itself is not unique, but what makes Evisort unique is how quickly we can get you uh, to this data. And part of that is the out-of-the-box integrations that we have. Uh, without a lot of IT involvement or API integration or building, really anything like that. Within a couple minutes, you can set up integrations with internal tools where you might have contracts like Salesforce, Box, Dropbox, Google Drive, and SharePoint 
Uh, and then every single contract that we pull into Evasort, I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop one into the platform here just for the sake of the demonstration. I've got a contract here, a services agreement. Uh, every single contract that we pull into Evasort, we do two things too. So the first thing is mostly scan PDF documents. We make those documents searchable with OCR. And then we run a long list of out-of-the-box models on those contracts. It takes about six seconds uh, for us to analyze a contract. And we pull out some of the information that you're seeing on the screen, some of the information you saw on the dashboard. But the thing about our models that may be different than tools you've seen in the past is we've done the hard work already of training these models on millions of contracts. So they work totally out of the box on your standard paper, on your third party paper to tell you what types of contracts you're entering into. Who are you contracting with? When do those contracts start and end? Are there any discounts available in your agreements that you might not have known about? Otherwise, are certain contracts available for termination by convenience? Or are there contracts with non-standard liabilities? Uh, the kind of information that folks are used to having to enter manually, we pull out automatically. Uh, and we show you where we find that information within the contract. So as a lawyer, you can actually validate that the information uh, is correct. We also pull out a long list of key provisions too. And one thing that I'll just mention here is that the AI is meant to understand the meaning of the text, not just look for certain keywords or phrases. So a force majeure provision, for example, that doesn't actually say force majeure, but it talks about acts of God or circumstances beyond either party's reasonable control. Because of the way we've trained our models, they can still identify concepts like force majeure within a contract and pull it out. Um, and we can also teach the system too. And I think this is really important. So for example, we had a client in the middle of uh, COVID, their supply chain was disrupted. They were uh, wanting to know if they could bill for partial delivery uh, of certain goods. Uh, and so what they did was that actually wasn't a model that Evasort had it out of the box, but by giving the system examples, they were able to train a new model called partial shipments. And if I click this box, apply tag to all documents, what the system will do is it will actually take what I gave it as an example and go and find similar language across the rest of my contract. So a due diligence project that could have taken weeks of opening and closing scanned PDF documents or running up a very high expensive outside legal counsel bill uh, can be accomplished in an hour uh, and can get answers to that question that really drive ROI. Another common use case right now is folks are looking at data privacy uh, and with the new uh, regulations uh, and changes being made by the EU, they wanna know which of their contracts have outdated data privacy language in them. And so they're training models with our tool to find those contracts that are out of date. And I just wanna give one more example of how this data can be actionable. Uh, in addition to the dashboards, we have a robust searching and reporting tool called the Analyzer where folks can go in and build custom reports based on the important use cases for their business. So for example, I could, build a search that shows me all the contracts that are coming up for renewal in the next 30 days or that have termination for convenience language. I call this my cost savings search uh, for folks that are looking at all of their vendors and wanting to know which of those vendors can we, can we maybe cancel in the next month uh, to impact our bottom line. A search like this would tell you exactly that list, you know, 260 different vendors. Here are the names of those vendors. This is what the contracts say about termination and renewal, so you can make those informed decisions. Um, another great example would be for folks that uh, work at companies where uh, their company is active from an acquisition standpoint, and you want to do some pre-acquisition due diligence and find out all of the contracts you're about to require that require written consent upon assignment. You can run a search and find, okay, there are 300 of the documents that we have, the contracts, customer contracts that we're about to acquire that might have some obligation to provide written consent. And you can view that here in the platform, but also, and I love this because when I was a practicing uh, attorney at, working at a law firm uh, and I uh, was a junior associate, you lock Riley in a room and say, hey, Riley, take a look uh, at all of these contracts and copy and paste the key provisions into a spreadsheet so we can go ahead and make some informed decisions. That should be a thing of the past because what I just did was I found all those contracts, and then I explore them to a spreadsheet where it says, hey, these are the types of contracts that require written consent. These are the counterparties uh, that we have to provide notice to. Um, these are the actual assignment provisions, what each one of those contracts say about assignment. So I love seeing this because uh, it takes me back to my days uh, working in, at a law firm and 
uh, this is so much easier uh, and can save a lot of money too for folks who would otherwise have to outsource this type of work. So um, just a couple of examples of how Evasort turns contracts into data. Very proud of this technology. Uh, before we were a software company, we were an AI research company. And a lot of what we were able to show today is the fruition of a lot of AI research uh, that is cutting edge in the industry. So excited to have shared this uh, with you, Richard, uh, and with the audience. Fantastic, Riley. Thank you. Well, we'll just stay with that screen because I might uh, walk you through uh, some of those aspects. But look, just just for clarity, for, for people who aren't familiar with AI or in this case, natural language processing or NLP, um, just, just to clarify a couple of things for them. Uh, you mentioned both uh, preset, pre-trained models and also the ability for the users to do some training. Um, could you just clarify what's going on there? So when you've got a, a preset uh, search of a contract or extraction of data from a contract, how much actual input from the user is there? They're, they're literally just running the contracts through the system and there's, there's no kind of quality assurance check, but, but how, does all, how does all that work? Yeah, so a couple things. Uh, first is we've got to get the contracts into the platform. Uh, we try to make that as easy and, and seamless as possible. Um, a lot of that is made easy by the out-of-the-box integrations we have. We actually last quarter averaged an onboarding time uh, of 18 days, which I think is sort of unheard of uh, in the industry for setting up a contract management system. So using our APIs, but also a lot of our standard integrations, we're able to pull in contracts. And then there's actually no work uh, required for folks uh, to get immediate insights from their agreements, because just like that contract that I uploaded, um, we already have pre-trained models to extract things like contract type, counterparty, start date, automatic renewal, uh, some of those key use cases that I've mentioned before. So um, we've done the hard work of actually training those models so that they can understand any contract as soon as it's loaded into the platform. And I had a client last week that had started with 10,000 contracts. Uh, we were able to get those into the platform and analyze within a couple of hours. Um, so that gives you a sense of sort of the speed to value of getting some of those initial insights. But then I think you know, the second part of your question is, okay, that's great that you pull out force majeure language and indemnity. A lot of clients care about those things, but we also have a lot of clients that are looking for very specific things within their contracts. They want to go beyond uh, what Evisort pull, pulls out of the box. And usually the folks that want to answer those questions are not technologists, they're not data scientists, they're not engineers. So they just know what they're looking for. And so we try to make it as accessible as possible to create new models. So let's say I wanted to find all my contracts that mentioned in early termination fee. I would accomplish this just in a very similar way as I would if I was talking to a human, like new hire or paralegal or junior associate in my company. And I would say, hey, here's an example of the language that I want to find across the rest of my contracts. So in this case, in the platform, I'll highlight it, I'll tag it, I'll give it a name, so an early termination fee. And then the AI takes it from there. So it takes what I give it, reads it, understands it, and then goes looks for similar things across the rest of uh, my corpus of contracts. So if you think you can do that, those one, two, three steps, then you can train a model in Evisor. We try to make it as easy as possible for folks to expand the things that our AI is able to look for in their documents. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, let, let's just go back briefly to the the, the pre-trained uh, the pre-trained uh, outputs. The so I'm just looking on the screen there. So you've got like governing law, uh, liability, non-compete, and so forth, and and obviously you've got dates and termination dates and so forth. I mean, how how accurate is that out of the box? I mean, are you you'll I mean, presumably there has to be some uh, human intervention there. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think of in general, it, when we're using AI in the legal space, it's kind of like driving a Tesla, right? Like uh, I, I'm gonna still keep my hands on the wheel, uh, but the AI is helping me make sure I don't get outside of the lane line. So we start to rely on the AI for some things, um, but you know, a human in the loop can still be very helpful in some situations. So for us, we, we try to get to as high a rate of accuracy as possible on our models. And when we test our models, before we release any model, um, we test them on contracts it's never seen before, uh, and we aim for 95% accuracy. Um, and that can be great and honestly far better than human review in a lot of situations. And the accuracy of not tracking something is always 0%. Um, so if I can, for example, look at a corpus of contracts and say, hey, you know, 25 to 30% of these contracts, give or take, have termination for convenience, that's very insightful, even if it's not 100% 
accurate. However, we do have clients where for certain fields, uh, maybe you know regulatory use cases, or we work with a lot of financial institutions who will even do things like execute transactions based off of this data. So there, there's going to have to be a human in the loop because the only acceptable rate of accuracy is 100%. And that's where we'd want to marry the AI with humans to create a more efficient process. So we bring contracts in, we analyze them, but then a human can actually take a look at this screen. And if you use these little magnifying glasses, we can actually show you where we found information within the agreement. And let's say it's wrong. In this case, this initial term is right. But if it was wrong, I could actually go ahead and I could make a correction to that information. But a lot easier for me to just see what the AI pulls, validate it, um, and then I can jump to the next contract in my review. So we have a lot of folks that will run AI-assisted reviews through the Evansor platform. That's where the UI is very helpful, uh, just in terms of helping folks interact with that data. Got you. And, and I guess for the for the super special data, they they would only you know check those. They wouldn't have to check the entire. Uh, output in terms of all those entities that you've extracted. They'd only have to go and sort of human in the loop check certain terms. That's exactly right. Yeah, we would call that, uh, sometimes we call that a horizontal review. Um, so we have somebody maybe that's dedicated to reviewing start dates and end dates. Uh, we can even provide little help text in the platform that guide folks as they're doing their review. And they can see this contract, they can check the effective date, maybe they check the uh, expiration date or the renewal date as well say yeah that looks good and then they can jump to the next contract in the list uh, folks might be used to doing a similar process in like relativity for example where you're looking at different hot spots within the agreement checking a couple of things and then jumping to the next document in the list gotcha fantastic that's very interesting um well let, let's look at the next question which is let's say i'm a gc or i'm the head of legal ops at a large company and i go wow this looks great so how do i onboard this how uh, what are the steps i need to go through to get this working yeah great question um so not a lot of steps and we but we do have an implementation team that would actually is dedicated to, that every client gets dedicated implementation team to help them get up and going. And some of the first questions we'll ask are, hey, where are your contracts stored today? And typically folks have contracts all over the place. Um, that's the you know, typical state of play for most of our clients. Um, they, have, they have contracts in local drives, they've got contracts in maybe a CRM tool like Salesforce, maybe the procurement team has their contracts stored in, in Ariba and legal maybe has some contracts in Google Drive, right? So it can be sort of a hodgepodge of different solutions. And what we wanna do is we wanna tap into those solutions. So we can pull contracts, for example, out of a local drive. We, a lot of times our clients will share those agreements with us, but with a lot of the solutions that are common today, uh, we can actually use out of the box integrations to plug right into those solutions and sync documents in without really any IT or engineering involvement. A typical sync for us takes less than five minutes to set up. So if today you have your contracts in SharePoint, for example, as long as you have admin permissions in Evisort and in SharePoint, you can set up that sync uh, and we can pull in contracts basically instantaneously into the platform. The analysis starts to run. And then I had mentioned, you know, I had a client last week that had about 10,000 agreements. Um, we were able to sync those in from their repository uh, and then actually do the AI analysis on top uh, within a number of hours. Um, and then you're pretty much ready to go. We do trainings and things like that to get folks up and going in the platform and introduce them to all the new functionality that they now have that they didn't before uh, with the AI powered tools in the platform. So there's an element of that, uh, but to get up and going and launched is pretty straightforward. Um, and is that's important, I think, for a lot of our clients who are used to having long drawn out CLM and contract management implementations. No, indeed, indeed. That's fantastic. And just, just last question, because uh, artificial lawyers audience uh, is across many countries. Um, is this primarily just for the US or, or are you available in other markets? No, we are available uh, in other markets as well. We do business uh, globally uh, with clients, not just in the US, but in other countries as well. Fantastic. Thanks, Ryan. It's super interesting. So if you'd like to know more, um, check out the website, uh, Every Sort. And, uh, but that's all we've got time for today. But uh, thank you very much and uh, speak again soon. Thank you.